It's good to talk to you again. It's Sunday. It's a week since my last upload. And I'm back with another podcast. Today I thought I'd uh, talk about how I got into reenactment. My kind of reenactment journey. And mostly there I'm going to talk about my medieval reenactment journey. Um, and focus mostly on 14th century and just a tad bit on 15th century. I've formally done both 18th century stuff, mid 18th century, Viking, and um, yeah, I'm also starting up a 17th century, early 17th century uh, outfit. Um, but I think it will be a long video if I'm going to go through everything of that, so I'm going to start with just the medieval stuff. But before that, of course, I have a cup of tea. Mm. I'm drinking a, guess it, black unflavored tea <laughs> um, today. Also one of my favorites, but I'm uh, kind of running out of it and it's a bit hard to get hold of. So I'm going to mm, save it for as long as I can. <laughs> Just really, really enjoy it when I drink it. And the tea is this. Afternoon blend from Harrods in London. Um, I got it the first time I was in London. I got this one in a, another tin uh, and I loved it. So I had to uh, buy more the second time I was in London, uh, which was in maybe in 2019, I think was the last time. I think there's two cups left in this one now. Um, but yeah, I love the color of this little tin. Of course, I'll save it and put some other nice teas inside. Uh, yeah, it's uh, a bit hard to open, but yeah, I don't know if you can see. <laughs> Not much left. So yeah, savor it while I can. So, cheers. Mm. And also, I just wanted to show you a little of some things I've been working on lately. Uh, finally. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with my little um, mini person uh, sweater or baby pullover. Um, and I'm very happy about that. It's um, cute and tiny and just, yeah, adorable. There's some little um, arrows in it, uh, but I mean, who cares? It was just a project to use up some uh, of my leftover yarn, so I'm just happy to have actually made um, a whole garment of it. Um, and yeah, the second thing I'm working on here uh, is a Kelly Genser, or Kelly sweater, um, from uh, the Sandnes pattern book. Um, it's twisted rib here in the neck, as well as the uh, between the raglan increases. Um, I'm working it in Harris Tweed together with the uh, Knitting for Olive uh, Silk Mohair. And uh, yeah, I figured I should uh, show you a little close up. So let's go. Here is the Kelly Genser. See if I can get it to focus. Oh, too much there. Nice little one. And here is the little baby pullover. And as you can see here, um, I managed to make an extra row of uh, knit stitches. So that's why you have the little line there. Uh, but I mean, you won't be able to notice it while you, um, while it's on, I guess. Yeah. The pretty twisted rib with some uh, Italian cast on which is the first time I've ever used that, so I'm very happy about it. It turns out really nice. Okay, so back to my <laughs> medieval journey then. I have a little um, notebook here with uh, some <laughs> key points and uh, it's a several pages, so we'll see how much I, um, <laughs> uh, I will say uh, 
with this. But yeah, um, I guess I've always been interested in history. My favorite program on the TV was a show when I was a kid was a show called Vetenskapens Värld, which is basically World of Science, a popular TV show in Sweden. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I've always loved archaeology and uh, imagined myself as an, a paleontologist or archaeologist as a kid. And uh, yeah, um, just history was my favorite subject as well in school. So um, it's not crazy, uh, or I mean, it's not a a far assumption to <laughs> figure that I would be going into reenactment, I guess. Um, so yeah, um, my first real encounter with medieval clothing uh, was in 2002. Um, my whole family went to Gotland uh, to visit our uh, then neighbors. They have um, a house uh, at Gotland. And we managed to go there um, during the medieval week, I think, or something like that. Or maybe, I think even we had borrowed our clothing from them, but we were visiting someone else, maybe? My aunt? Either way, we had... <laughs> I'll see if I can get a picture uh, of it uh, and show you. We wore uh, the typical Swedish um, starter clothing. Uh, linen clothing from made from pattern by uh, Sofia's Atelier, uh, which is, uh, I mean, every Swedish person in this <laughs> uh, hobby has heard of Sofia's Atelier. Not very accurate, but I mean, it's something. Uh, we continue to go to the medieval week, mo the whole family, but um, after a while it was mostly me and my mom. But we. Um, did so to mostly visit my uh, aunt, my dad's sister, since she lived and worked in Visby. Um, so yeah, we stayed at her place uh, inside the ring wall and uh, yeah, just hung out at the medieval week. And then the next step in my journey was in 2006, when I went to my very first LARP. <laughs> it, um, was in November 2006, so very cold. Uh, it was uh, uh, with a group, or the um, the ones who had the uh, LARP are called Pegas. Um, and uh, the LARP uh, was Tid of Ofred uh, in a campaign called Abderon. Yeah, it was <laughs> seriously cold. I had the same type of linen clothing in uh, <laughs> November. Uh, so yeah, mm, I was kind of freezing my butt off. Uh, but anyways, I managed to find it fun enough to continue. Uh, so yeah, I was uh, continuing uh, to uh, go to LARPs uh, a couple of times a year. And uh, during all that time, I found that my favorite part of LARP was to make the outfits. So I just dove into um, more making outfits and how would it have been in the medieval ages, uh, in the medieval time. Um, and by about 2008, I found this um, forum online called Historiska Värdar. Uh, in English, that would, I guess, be uh, historical worlds. Um, and yeah. Uh, Lots of information and from really, really good reenactors uh, that had been uh, at it for many, many years at that time. So yeah, I started to make my LARP outfits in wool. Um, and uh, yeah, from then I also found that you could base your stuff out of the actual find rather than patterns. So in 2009, I went to a LARP in Ronneby, uh, Sweden, uh, South Sweden. We, together with a group where we were supposed to be a mm, camp followers or a sort of group following a countess. And um, yeah, I uh, in that group we had a rule. You had to have at least two sources uh, as a base for everything you had in camp, which was amazing. Uh, and led me to my first source-based um, interpretation of a medieval <laughs> outfit. And you could expect that it would be late 14th century, but no, I started out in the late 13th century. Uh, 
So um, basically basing everything off um, Mashiowski Bible, the M Bible, the one that no one can pronounce, <laughs> at least not in Sweden. Uh, so yeah, here's my outfit. Um, base layer in silk, uh, red silk, and then a circle of um, uh, blue, <laughs> blue wool. Mostly, all, well, the silk dress was hand sewn, all hand sewn, and the blue one was sewn uh, on machine, except for the visible seams, which I uh, did by hand. So yeah, I'm very proud of it. The look of it is nice, uh, like the form, shape of it. The fabrics, uh, the materials, I mean, colors and the silk, mm, maybe not so much, but I'm very happy with it. Um, and yeah, then it continued. The same year, uh, my mom and I, uh, for those who don't know, uh, my mom is my very best friend um, and we do everything together. Her name is Annette and she's also part of um, my reenactment group. Uh, so we've been going everywhere together. And later in 2009, we went to um, an event called Medeltida Ysta or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, we uh, uh, it had a time frame set in the late 14th century. And since the medieval week in Gotland is set in the same time frame, we set out to make our own late 14th century um, dresses. And yeah, that's when I found Lakot Simple. And uh, we made uh, mock-ups for ourselves and uh, uh, our own patterns and made ourselves a uh, late 14th century dress each, which you can see here. Bing! <laughs> um, yeah. Oops, sorry, for, sorry about that. Tea break. Yes, yeah, so we went there and had our woolen uh, uh, tight kirtles uh, with buttons uh, on the sleeves and uh, lacing down the front. And yeah, I'm really happy with that. So it's for a first try of late 14th century, it's I'd say good. Um, still, fabric not so much. I mean, that dark purple in my dress is... Um, yeah, maybe not that accurate. But still, I'm amazed by myself. Um, then the following year, I made my um, Mi Party dress. Um, it's a grey dress, uh, checkered on uh, one side and grey on the other side. Uh, I've since sold it, but uh, oh man, I really like that dress. Um, and sometime around then, I also made my first um, uh, kirtle or uh, dress that I still use uh, on events. And it was a grey one. Um, mm -hmm. And during all this time, uh, my mom and I went to uh, the medieval week at Gotland in Visby every year. I think we went for 14 years straight to uh, the medieval week at Gotland. And then um, after maybe 2011 or 2012, I think we only start to go by annually or even every three years. Because what happened in 2011? The first ever Battle of Visby. Um, amazing. Uh, we weren't part of Battle of Visby by then, but some of our friends were. So we visited camp and just hung out and uh, saw the battles and everything. Uh, and we were amazed. Wow. It really um, caught our eye, so to say. Um, and then in 2013, so two years later, I became a trial member of my uh, group Karnis or Fraternis Militia Karnis um, and went as a trial member with them to my first Battle of Visby and the second, which was the second one, second installment of the um, event. And same there, uh, I was just hooked immediately. Um, and continue to uh, be part of Karnis. Um, the following year in 2014, I was uh, elected into uh, like a proper member into the um, group all, and also got to, uh, to be a part of the board. Um, so yeah, I was a board member for a long time where several of those was as chair of Karnis. 
Um, and yeah, we've been had some really fun events with Carnis. In uh, 2015, we went down to Azincourt or Agincourt. I don't know. Uh, I guess I prefer the <laughs> French um, pronunciation, even though I'm not really, really, really good at all at f uh, French. But yeah, we went there in 2015 for the Jubilee, and uh, it was. Mm, I'd say fun, but that's just because my memory has been a bit, mm, what to say, selective loss. <laughs> it was rainy, muddy, uh, I mean, us Swedes thinking that we'll go down by end of July or whenever it was to uh, France, expecting warm weather and beautiful uh, sun, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was more or less October weather, which is nice in a reenactment perspective, because we got to have the real weather and uh, yeah mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> the only time i was really warm was when we were sleeping um, so <laughs> it was actually terrible and um, yeah don't even get me started we can talk about that another time <laughs> yeah wow well. um one thing i'm very proud of uh, during my time as a reenactor reenactor is uh, when we did the Breck, as it is called, the Karnis Banquet in 2017. I was the kind of the coordinating uh, person for that, so the one uh, in charge of uh, the whole event, together with my uh, uh, group member and group colleague friend uh, Martin, who was uh, in charge of the uh, food. Uh, and together we uh, um, made this uh, event, uh, which is, yeah, really something is extra. It is a um, banquet, uh, banquet where we just serve over-the-top food. Uh, I think in this last installment we had uh, 50 courses that were served over four servings. And yeah, I'll just pop up some pictures here while I speak uh, of the, um, uh, some of the courses. And uh, it was held, held in a kind of um, tent castle, so we had built a little castle of our tents so we could serve um, our guests there. And then we also had a little more mm, peasant's feast or whatever uh, we would call it, where we um, had, uh, I think, about 100 guests or something that were uh, just sitting outside and uh, um, a little bit further down in camp and enjoyed themselves. Uh, we had tournaments, uh, three tournaments, to um, in which the mm, if you won the tournaments, you got two seats at the um, banquet, uh, which was nice. Uh, so we could have, uh, if you couldn't afford uh, the banquet, you could still win a, a seat at the banquet. And uh, yeah, we um, uh, had an amazing time. I mean, it was hard work for many months and uh, I was there a week ahead and a couple of days after to just uh, set everything up and make sure it, it went smoothly but yeah I've heard so many compliments since and I'm very proud of our work as a group um, yeah and since then I've started to uh, venture into 15th century reenactment and the first um, time I uh, first my first attempt at 15th century reenactment was in 2018 so I am um, in 2018 I did my master thesis work um, and that meant I lived on Iceland for a couple of months uh, to almost three months I think in total um, so yeah, I lived on Iceland in Reykjavik and didn't bring any of my uh, um, reenactment re stuff there, of course. Um, so when I landed in Sweden again uh, after Iceland, it was exactly one week until my first ever 15th century event. And I still hadn't started on my dress. But I managed. Luckily, um, it's... Um, not that different in most base garments and things from uh, 14th century, so I could um, kind of get away with using reusing a lot of my old stuff, old, like old stuff. Uh, but yeah, I managed to make one uh, 
um, kirtle uh, for 15th century reenactment and I'm very proud of myself. And what an event. We went to Glimminge Hus in southern Sweden and uh, I basically cooked uh, for a whole weekend. Uh, wow. I, I mean, it's um, the person, the people there uh, in the group that were her, um, organizing the event. Amazing people. Yeah, so the company of St. Sebastian who are organizing the event are just amazing people. And uh, I'm so ha happy that I'm able to join them for this event. And I can't wait for the next one. And yeah, I went there in 2018-2019. Um, and as you see the pictures, I mean, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful location, beautiful people. And yeah, just... I'm just so happy to have been there. In 2020, obviously there weren't a lot of events. And since I haven't really uh, gone to many events, um, there was one uh, late 2020 uh, with Karnis, um, where we uh, did our own thing, hiking, uh, not hiking, camping in a field by a lake and just enjoying ourselves for a weekend without tourists. And then in 2021, I went on a pilgrimage with uh, uh, the same uh, guys at Glimminge Hus. So it was the pilgrimage pilgrimage 21, um, kind of arranged by a company of St. George. And I went on a small pilgrim pilgrimage with the uh, company of St. Sebastian at Kinekulle. Um And also then I made a new dress within a week. Um, because I figured I had I needed one that wasn't as fancy as the one I made for um, my first uh, time at Cleaning News. Um, so I made one a green one instead. Um, yeah, I just enjoyed the whole uh, process of sewing there. So I'm uh, amazed that it went so quickly. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, I guess the seams are a bit. Uh, not as many seams as in a 14th century dress and uh, I just told myself to enjoy every single part, every single stitch and then all of a sudden it was done. And then we went to um, the pilgrimage, uh, a little group of people and uh, had fun. Even though it was raining we had a lot of fun. Um, hiking, looking at beautiful flowers, picking wild garlic, um, talking about different things. I had a little talk about uh, the geology of the place, Chinekulle, which is kind of special in Sweden, at least in, by Swedish um, measures. And uh, yeah, I think that's the last event I've been to. Yeah, that feels strange. Hopefully, things can start up again now. And uh, there will be some more events in 2022. I um, plan to go to uh, Battle of Isby, of course. Um, and hopefully we can make another pilgrimage. That would be nice. Um, yeah. I would love to hear from you how you're, um, if you're a reenactor, how did you start? When did you start? If you're a knitter, how did you come into knitting? Have you been not knitting uh, for a long time? Um, if you're a tea drinker, which is your favorite tea? And I think I'll leave you with that. Uh, I'm noticing that the uh, light isn't very good anymore, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, I guess it also means that it's time for me to say goodbye. I'd be very happy if you liked this video and if you subscribe to the channel. Um, and please comment uh, comment if you have any suggestions on what to uh, what I should make as in videos what menu blah, 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 what videos I should make in the future <laughs> Wow anyways it's time for me to go have a great one hey <laughs>